We all love to spend time in Dota 2. However, not that time when your teammates or enemies make you tilt it. There are situations when things start going bad from the start, as soon as you see a hero during the drafting phase. Today we'll talk about the 5 most hated Dota heroes. Nobody likes these heroes, only boosters and masochists. Let's go! Broodmother Broodmother is currently the least popular hero in Dota 2. It's a hero for boosters and players who want to finish the game in 20 minutes. Your opponents will pick her on the last pick and counter all your draft. After patch 7.33, where Broodmother was nerfed so hard she had to be buffed in 7.33b because her win rate fell below 40%. However, Broodmother wasn't always in such a bad place. In addition to changes to her skills, her ultimate used to be her first skill, and instead of Silken Bola, which used to be a shard, she had a passive called Incapacitating Bite. Broodmother was heavily reworked. Her web used to provide invisibility. Considering that, at the time, Broodmother often went not only on mid, but also on hard lane, where there were two supports. People often played triple lanes at that time. Broodmother could farm these subs if they made at least one mistake. You might think that it became easier after the hero was reworked in patch 7.07. .07. The web no longer provided invisibility. But no. Boosters and fans of easy wins continued to pick Broodmother mid, rush Orchid, and take out opponents in 20 minutes. However, when Wraith Pact was added to the game in patch 7.31, Broodmother once again became a frequent guest in the hard lane, where she could collect auras, which allowed her to be useful even after 20 minutes. So, what should you do if you're unlucky enough to play against Broodmother? Considering that she's usually picked in the last phase, you need at least one counter pick for her. Better, two or three. Among meta picks, which people often pick now, Legion Commander, Underlord, and Phantom Lancer, you can pick Tidehunter and Troll Warlord. Your task is to drag to the late game and not play alone. Tinker now, with patch 7.33, Valve is once again attempting to balance Tinker by nerfing Blink. His win rate is approaching the balanced 50%. It's hard to remember the times when he was an unreal Imba hero. In the early years of Dota 2, he played with Dagon and Ethereal. This Tinker haunted you all over the map, getting 20 or 30 kills. Only hero enthusiasts, boosters, or cheaters played him, which almost zeroed your chances of winning. However, Valve decided not to fix this build, but to give him an alternative. In patch 6.80, they added Aghanim Scepter, which improved two skills at once, laser and rockets. Instead of two, it fired four. Realizing that it was too much, they gradually nerfed Aghanim until some game designer came up with a brilliant idea in patch 7.28 to slightly buff Tinker. Now, Aghanim only buffs Laser. In addition to AoE, it gave plus 400 cast range and reduced the current and maximum HP of the target by 20%. This effect was stackable. Do you now understand what an Imba Hero Valve created? Now, in addition to Illusionists and Thin Subs, Tinker could take down tanks like Tidehunter, Centaur, or Underlord with 2-3 lasers. Moreover, he can now solo farm Roshan. It should be noted that this was not the most popular build for Tinker. The more popular one was Shiva's Guard, plus Overwhelming Blink. It made Tinker the AoE king in the early and mid game, and Creep simply died from this item combination. He was nerfed in the following patch notes, but in 7.30, Valve decided to buff him again. They added Keen Conveyance, which basically sped up the game for Tinker, who no longer needed to farm for travel boots. Now, Tinker continues to play with Shiva's after Blink. If you are unlucky enough to encounter him in pubs, remember, gang up on him in mid, gank him in the jungle, and take the Imba Nyx assassin. Nyx moves this hero to the tavern very fast. Meepo some time ago, Meepo was one of the least popular heroes in the pro scene. At the Lima Major, he was one of the 12 heroes that were neither picked nor banned once during the entire tournament. This lack of interest is due to the hero nerfs and the difficulty of mastering him. To become a Meepo master, you must play many games. However, if there is a Meepo god on the team, they will use it as an advantage. Remember how Liquid won the first map of the TI9 Grand Final? They last picked Meepo for Weeha. OG didn't let him do it again. They closed out the final 3-1 in their favor. Speaking of our days, Gladiators and their offlane player Ace, who used to play carry, Meepo was his signature hero. So in the last game of the group stage against TSM, who had already been eliminated, Ace decided to test out the new Meepo with Aghanim, which makes the Geomancer into Megazord. In 2013, when I started playing Dota and following the pro scene, Meepo players were divided into two camps. Those 
those who first buy Mechanism and those who buy Vladimir. Somewhere around 2014 to 2015, the Meepo meta changed. New nerds on this hero appear, such as Weeha, who rushed Aghanim on Meepo. The Romanian even got into a scandal when he cheated in one of the EEL matches to get Aghanim on the seventh minute. If you're interested in learning more about this story, write about it in the comments. In 2016, people saw a new meta build on Geomancer, two Dragon Lances. An item designed for buying on ranged carries turned out to be very cool on Meepo because of its cheap stats. The situation in pubs differs from the pro scene, especially at low ratings. Boosters there love to pick Meepo and end games in 20 to 30 minutes because players at 2 to 3k start playing as 5 very late. So if you encounter a booster on Meepo in a pub, remember that Dota is a team game. Arc Warden On the professional Dota 2 scene, Arc Warden is among the elite group of heroes that only true Dota gods can play. Just remember Arc Warden from Miracle. His Rashan kills in one second during Epicenter Major or the low HP throne defense with his magnetic field against Alliance that forever etched their names into Dota history. Now, after the 7.33 update, Arc has returned to the physical carry role with the new Manta style meta. After Manta, he can solo Rashan beside heroes. These changes have reflected in his win rate when people realized that Arc rework wasn't so hard. His win rate returned to 52%. But about a year ago, Arc's most popular build was Mage. He was buying Aghanim Scepter, Octarine Core, Ethereal Blade, and Overwhelming Blink, and taking the 25 level talent on cooldown reduction. After that, the game for the opposing team was over. Catching Arc was almost impossible, as was escaping from him. Even earlier, when patch 7.28 was released, and everyone started buying Necronomicon as their first item, we talked about those dark times of Dota in our other video. Arc wasn't left behind. He also became became part of the meta, allowing him to become one of the best early pushers. When Ark was first added to Dota at the end of 2015, boosters loved him very much. This new hero essentially has two heroes in your hands, doubling your chances of winning 1 versus 9. So if you weren't lucky enough to meet Zet in a pub, follow the same steps as you would with Tinker. Crush him in the mid lane, gang him in the jungle, and take the Imba Nyx assassin. Nyx moves this hero to the respawn very fast. Before moving on to the hero that everyone asked to be removed from Dota, we want to let you know that you can support our channel financially via Patreon or PayPal. All the details are in the description below this video. Techies Techies used to be one of those heroes that completely disrupted any enemy team's tactics in Dota 2. With Techies, it was impossible to hold a lane peacefully. Playing against the Mine Layer was a battle of vision on the map, where you never knew where the green bombs were stacked and would blow up even with six inventory slots. Most players who picked Techies guaranteed themselves almost 100% reports. Techies' popularity in pubs was largely due to the Russian streamer Travoman, who annoyed everyone at high MMRs by playing only for the sake of planting mines and blowing up streamers or players, and posting it on YouTube. His hypocritical, pseudo-positive behavior, plus non-team gameplay on Techies, proved infectious to regular players. I was one of them who were inspired by his play and started playing techies at low ratings without proper skill. Everyone was asking for techies to be removed from the game, but Valve decided otherwise. In patch 7.31, techies was reworked. He became a typical nuker hero for the mostly semi-support role. Green mines were removed, and instead, the red mines became ultimate. Now, the first skill slows and deals damage, and instead of a disable mine, reactive taser was added which disarms enemies who try to hit you. The must-have item for the new techies became Shard, which allowed techies to stun heroes with Blast Off. In 7.33, the hero has changed again. Now the third skill stuns instead of silencing. The old and rarely used Aghanim Scepter became Shard, and the new Aghanim Scepter turns the map into a minefield. These changes did not have a positive impact on the hero's win rate. Currently, it is below 50%, although it was 50 to 51% before. That's all for today. Which of these heroes do you hate the most? Who did I forget to mention? Write about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It will help us in our growth. See you in a week.